So we are moving on, as Dr. Singal mentioned, the world leader of debulking. I will tell you, I had an opportunity to meet Dr. Hakan Borison when he was here. Um, I'm going to take you all to Sweden with me. Um, that is where Dr. Barnson practices. He is the professor of plastic and reconstructory surgery at Lund University. He'll be talking about liposuction and how to get complete reduction and maintain results over time. You will notice different patients in the video who have upper and lower extremity lymphedema. Um, he will also explain who's a candidate for debulking and then who will bring into the OR and he will bring us into the OR. He is going to demonstrate a liposuction debulking process. So I did want to give you a warning of that. And I myself am a candidate and Dr. Singal did liposuction on my left arm and I have very, very good results. However, still compressed 24 seven. So um, in the next 20 minutes, Dr. Uh, Bornson will talk about the debulking process and then we will open it up for Q&A for five minutes. So welcome Dr. Borson. Thank you very much for inviting me to this meeting. I am Håkan Bos, I'm Professor of Plastic Surgery at Lund University, and I work at the Department of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery in Malmö. I will talk about liposuction and how to get the complete reduction and how to maintain these results over time. Here are my disclosures. This is my thesis from 1998. And here is a recent thesis from one of my PhD students. So here we see the problem with lymphedema, very large lymphedemas, and also very large arms. So why do we do liposuction? I came across this picture years ago, and you can see a normal arm with um, some adipose tissue and also lymphedema to some with uh, abundance of adipose tissue. And this is an MRI of one of the first patients I operated on. You can see the excess adipose tissue. And here you can see two examples of uh, aspirate, which contains 90 to 100% fat. The pitting test I use is very important. Press as hard as possible for three minutes. And sometimes you get uh, deep pits like this. But in this patient, there is minimal pitting because a patient has been treated with conservative treatment to get rid, rid of the fluid. So here you have a combination of lymph and fat, and here is just fat. So in this case, there is no indication for liposuction. Continue with conservative treatment. In this case, the patient could be a candidate for liposuction. So what is the problem in a non-pitting edema? The problem is the fat, not the lymph, because the lymph you can easily remove by conservative treatment. But the fat needs to be removed surgically. So adipose tissue in non-pitting edema is a question of medical ignorance. In the beginning, I heard comments like this, adipose tissue, I've never seen it. Is that something peculiar for Swedes? or I see no excess adipose tissue, maybe sweets eat different food than Mediterranean people, or that liposuction for lymphedema is science fiction. So is there any evidence for adipose tissue hypertrophy in lymphedema? We did the volume rendering computer tomography in 11 patients. Here you tell the computer just show pixels for fat and then you can subtract and in this case we had an excess volume of 1.3 liter of adipose tissue. We also continue with a dual emission x-ray absorbed geometry in 18 patients and here you can also estimate uh, not only the fat but also the muscle and bone tissue. And to the left, you can see there is an excess volume of 510 grams. And one year after, there is a slight overcorrection. Uh, in these patients, 
the lymphedema tosomes were 58% larger than the normal ones. There was 73% and more adipose tissue, and there was 47% more muscle tissue due to the heaviness of the arm and also an increased mineral content. You might think that the duration of lymphedema parallels the amount of excess tissue, but uh, there is no such correlation. So the deposition of uh, adipose tissue starts when the lymphedema starts. Later I came across this paper by Schneider and co-workers. They showed here the wild type mouse when lymph comes out to the interstices and is removed by normal lymphatic vessels. But here you have the uh, PROX1 mutated mouse with deficient lymphatics and then fat cells precursors are turned into fat cells. Here you can see the mutated mouse uh, at the upper part of the picture and the wild type mouse, the normal one, at the bottom. Uh, Babak Marara and his group also found that adipogenesis was associated with a marked inflammatory response. And um, Geoffrey Gertner found out that the underlying pathophysiology of lymphedema drives adipose derived stem cells toward adipogenic differentiation. So inflammation upregulated genes leads to excess fat deposition and the goal is to remove the excess, excess fat to get complete reduction with liposuction. So in the beginning we have a combination of fat and fluid and we have to do uh, uh, the bandaging in order to remove the fluid and we get to a non-pitting edema state where you just have a majority of adipose tissue and then we do the liposuction to get complete reduction. So a few examples, 3.1 liter one year after, 4.2 liters one month later, three months later, and complete reduction at one year. 3.6 liters and two years after a slight overcorrection. 2.5 liters, five years after, 2.2 liters, 20 years after. So we have operated uh, 189 patients and we have followed everyone for uh, up to 25 years. We measure volumes with water plethysmography and we have an excess volume uh, ranging up to 4.2 liters. And here is the result. So around one six months we have a complete reduction and it stays there during the follow-up period of 25 years. The cannulas are different from a cosmetic liposuction cannulas. They are more indented. Here you can see a picture where I a pinch an already treated area and to the right there is an area that we are going to operate on. You can see the dramatic result here uh, where the distal part of the forearm has been operated on. This procedure takes about two hours. We do it in a bloodless phase using a tourniquet. This is a non-pitting arm lymphedema. We exsanguinate the arm with a tourniquet on, do liposuction distally with three millimeter candle line proximal with four millimeter up to the tourniquet. Here you can see the effect of liposuction. We're using para-assisted liposuction. Here you can see the aspirate going up to the tourniquet. We take measurements normally on the healthy arm to use this as a template for new garments. In this case, we used an old garment that we have taken in using a sewing machine. Put some padding on. Tourniquet is released, infusion of saline with adrenaline and using the tumescence technique to do liposuction of the proximal part of the upper arm. Two days later, arms are almost equal in size. So we have good fitting garments, that's a prerequisite.
I will not go into this because that's another topic that takes some time to talk about. And if an edema increases, it's due to ineffective garment or decreased patient compliance. So the keys to success is to inform the patient about the postoperative period. You have a mental contract to wear continuous uh, compression. And if you don't have money for compression garments, you should not do this. And follow up if you are interested in scientific follow up and publication. So we have a simple classification. You do the pitting test. So if you're pitting, the problem is lymph. If there is no pitting, the problem is adipose tissue. When you're pitting, you do the conservative treatment. And then if the arm or leg uh, are still large without pitting, you go for liposuction. So we have done this a long time and we are endorsed by the Swedish National Board of Health and Welfare. Leg lymphedema. In the 50s and 60s, the CHAS procedure was used in order to remove subcutaneous adipose tissue down to the muscle fascia. Of course, this technique gave the patient uh, a lighter leg, but it doesn't look so good or for bilateral ones. And sometimes uh, the skin uh, transplants break down and you get a lot of oozing and infection. We have operated 126 patients, 64 primary, 62 secondary, and mostly women. All had had conservative treatment and all used compression garments before surgery and no minimal pitting. And here you can see the follow-up uh, up to 15 years. We also measure volumes with water plethysmography. And the mean excess volume is uh, 3.8 liters up to 8.5 liters. And here you can see the result of the follow-up up to 15 years. We get a complete reduction around one year and it stays there uh, during the follow-up time of 15 years. This is a 73-year-old woman with a primary leg lymphedema. We use para-assisted liposuction using a tourniquet in the bloodless field. Three millimeter cannulas you use distally and four millimeter proximally. Cannulas are 15 or 30 centimeter long. It's a good to have an assistant because it's quite tiring. And here are circumferences. We compare with a normal leg so we get the right size. It's a good workout for the week, pure yellow fat. And this is after. And two days later, we remove the compression. And you can see there are no hematomas or sagulations. So here is how it can look like. After a typical leg lymphedema procedure. This lady that was operated on had six liters preoperatively almost and a slight overcorrection at six months. Here's another patient with an excess volume of 14 liters and this is 20 years after. And he can wear any clothing he wants. But from here to here there is no surgery performed, just conservative treatment to uh, get rid of all the fluid by bandaging and then after liposuction it looks like this. Here you can see the same patient, the green is uh, lymphedematous leg and the yellow is uh, almost normal leg and here you can see the leg before surgery, here is a difference between the legs and uh, by time we can get rid of about 10 liters of fluid. Then we have this state here we do the liposuction and eventually get a complete reduction. So this stage here, which is a kind of plateau phase, where we have no pitting, we know that the remaining excess volume is fat. Here is uh, before surgery, you can see the abundance of fluid and fat. And this is after liposuction. The same here, before and after. This lady has an excess volume of almost 26 liters. From here to here, no surgery, 
just doing conservative treatment to get rid of the fluid and then the liposuction with a slow, slight overcorrection. This is four years later. Same thing here from 9.4 to 4.7 liters with just removing the fluid and then do the liposuction and get a complete reduction. This lady has five liters excess volume. Two years later, she can wear any clothing she wants. This lady, 6.6 .6 liters primary lymphedema. Two years later, can wear any clothing. 10 years later, no recurrence. We use compression garments postoperatively, but that is another talk. This lady is 7 liters and 6 months postoperatively, before and 6 months later, a slight overcorrection. She can now run 10 kilometers three times a week. A little about microsurgery, which I do not perform, not for lymphedema. This picture from Mihara shows the various stages of lymphedema. And when you have dilatation, you have ectasia, contraction and sclerosis type, lymphatics do not work. You get the stiff lymph vessels that cannot pump and you get valvular insufficiency. i show you a case uh, that I operated on in Barcelona. Uh, she had an excess volume of 3.8 liters after a microsurgery. That was adipolymphatic free flap and two LBAs, and the preoperative excess volume was 3.2 liters. So after microsurgery, there was an increase of 655 milliliters. And then I was asked uh, to do liposuction two years later on the same patient. And here you can see the pre and uh, postoperative pictures. I removed four liter of excess volume. And here you can see the result following surgery. And three years after liposuction, she has a complete reduction. So here you see the pre op pictures and three years after. So um, here is a tip for microsurgeons, the simple algorithm to check the outcome of surgery. You have a patient with an excess volume and you remove the compression garment and then there will be an increase due to accumulation of fluid like this. You put the garment on again and it goes back to uh, the previous volume. Then you do your surgery and after say three months you remove the garment again and if there is an increase well then the surgery was not successful but if there is no increase, the surgery was successful. I haven't seen any publication of such a follow-up and that would be very interesting to see. I will end with a patient that I operated together with um, Dr. Thomas Lam at Macquarie University. She had an excess volume of 12 liters and she could not uh, walk up the eight steps to the outpatient clinic. This is what we removed. This is three months later with a 65% reduction. This is three and a half years later. Hi Harkin, Sean, and I'm here at the top of Sydney Hub Bridge, 1,390 steps, three months. After one year, I received this email from her. And she said that what a change the last 12 months has brought to her life. Her leg is continuing to decrease. She's still running most days and have lost over 25 kilogram. She went around the world and there was nothing she couldn't do. She has returned to work full time and she has been to more social events in the last 12 months than she has attended in the last 10 years. So in conclusion, adipose tissue dominates not pitting lymphedema. Adipose tissue deposition starts when the lymphedema starts. There is no recurrence. 
Excess adipose tissue can be removed by liposuction, but not with CDT, compression, pumping, or microsurgery. So the outcome of conservative therapy and microsurgery is limited by the presence of the newly formed adipose tissue, which you have to remove in order to get complete. Here is my team, Karen and Barbara. We wouldn't have these good results without their help. During the years, we have had many visitors. Here are some of them. Emma Green from Boston, Jane Lin from Singapore, Jome Masia from Barcelona, Drew Singel from Boston, John Boyash, Thomas Lamb with team from Sydney, Jay Granser from LA, and Alex Manark from Scotland, Roman Skoratsky from US, and Holger Engel from Germany, Andrzej Schuba from Poland, and Marek Paul from Boston and later Poland. And this is a team uh, with Flora and Jung, where I supervise their surgery. Flora Redner from South Africa. This patient was very happy too after treatment. So I thank you very much for your attention. This is Sweden in summertime. And if you want more information, you can go to this homepage where you find volume measurement programs and follow-up charts and a lot of literature. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Bornson. That Those results are just phenomenal, amazing. Uh, we had a lot of questions come in about compression, but before I get to that, how do you ensure that when you're doing the procedure that you're not damaging more lymphatic vessels? Uh, oh, you did a scientific study and uh, uh, my, uh, the, uh, the first answer to the question is that the lymphatics are already damaged. And I thought we cannot damage in them any further. So we did a scintigraphy study in 14 patients where we did six, uh, did six scintigrams, two before surgery with and without the garments. And then again at the three and 12 months, and we could not see any further uh, decrease of the lymph transport capacity. After that paper, there had been at least two papers showing the same thing. So normally when you do liposuction for cosmetic reasons, you have some effect on the lymphatics like swelling. That's why you have a swelling after surgery, but that goes back to normal after a couple of weeks. Wow, that's amazing. Do you remove the excess skin at the same time of the liposuction? No, you should not do that. There are some surgeons that do that. I don't recommend it uh, because then you have get an open wound. As you can see, none of my patients here needed any removal of skin. And uh, even the patient with 26 liters, there was no need to remove the skin. It just uh, kind of contracts by time. Wow. Can you also talk about um, compression for a few minutes? We had a, several questions come in about that. What percentage of your patients do wear compression afterwards? And is it for 24 seven for the rest of their life? Well, you can never tell, <laughs> um, but uh, they, they need to know that before surgery, uh, they all have compression, so they have no or minimal pitting, like at most five millimeter pitting of the three minutes of compression. So they are used to using the garment. The only change is that they get a normal arm or a normal leg. So, for example, if I get a patient that has not wearing uh, garments at all, and of course this patient has a lot of pitting, then I send her back to the therapist and I want her to remove all the fluid and also to wear compression before surgery. So she's mentally prepared to wearing of garments after. For arms, we have one uh, flat knitted compression garments, uh, sometimes also with a glove. But for legs, we have two compression garments on top of each other. We have a class three and a class two compression garment uh, for leg. And daytime, they use these two and nighttime, they use one of them. And so this continuous compression is the clue to uh, get these good results for a long time. So in conclusion, the all the patients are mentally prepared. But of course, there are patients that after surgery has found their own way to 
do it. They might take off the garment during nighttime and put it on again. Uh, and I have about six, seven arm patients that don't use any compression at all. That mm -hmm. might be due to the removal of the big load of adipose tissue th so that the remaining lymphatics is, is, uh, are uh, able to drain the arm. But that's just a few patients. So we go for compression 24 seven. Right. And one last question, I know we're short on time. Would you recommend pneumatic compression pumps for after the procedure, why or why not? Well, the compression pumps work when you use them, but when you stop using them, then uh, the, the fluid comes back. So it's an on and off procedure. Uh, we don't use it at all. We don't use any MLD, we just use a compression. Oh, you don't use MLD either? No, oh. because there are about 40 to 50 papers that have shown that the component of CDT uh, with MLD does not uh, further decrease the volume. It's the bandaging that decreases the volume, not the MLD. Great. All right. Thank you very much. We really, truly appreciate your time today, Dr. Bornson. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me.